Hey there guys, my name is Octavian, and uh, this is going to be a shoutcast of a Ranked Fives match between Team Origin and Team Gamers 2. I was lucky enough, while looking through some of the replays over on Lol King, to find this particular game. And I hope it's going to be an interesting one. These are both two very highly skilled teams, and uh, Origin has been hyped a lot recently as potentially being one of the better new teams on the scene, so... This could be very, very interesting to watch, and we are promising to have a bit of good gameplay here. Looks like Gamers 2 is setting up a fairly standard defensive line along their side of the river while Origin does the same thing. And I'm going to be calling them Origin. I don't know if it's supposed to be pronounced Oregon or Oregon. I, I'm i not entirely sure, but just for consistency's sake, I'm going to be going with Origin, this particular shoutcast. And it looks like Animator's going to be starting at his Gromp camp, most likely. Yeah, he's roaming over to their most junglers in this preseason. Don't enjoy starting at the colored buffs anymore. They rather prefer to start at one of the smaller camps, the sort of solitary camps off by themselves, be it the Krugs or the Gromp camp, which then gives them that ever-valuable smite buff, the Grugs on one hand allowing them to stun jungle monsters which gives them a lot more survivability in the jungle and allows them to come out a lot more healthy after a good solid clear and the Gromp camp allowing them to just simply do more damage to the jungle camps after smiting it which has the same results effectively. I've yet to figure out exactly which camp is superior for getting a better clear in terms of health and which one's superior for getting a better clear in terms of speed or indeed if one of them is better in both respects but they're similar enough that neither jungler should really be gimped for whichever choice they made. But I'll move off of the junglers now. We do have a lot of other lanes to get into. Down on the bottom side is going to be Kasing and Yuki playing a Janna and Corky lane. Very standard stuff there. No, nothing really wrong with that combo, whereas on the side of Origin, it is Mithy and Zvanillion playing a Nami and Tristana combo. Now, Tristana has always been kind of a competitor there's never really been a meta where Tristana fell out entirely, but she's been top tier before and she's been second or third tier, and I'd say currently that she's resting comfortably at second tier right now. She used to be top tier, but some changes to rapid fire made it so that she fell from grace a little bit, but she's still quite powerful, and uh, rapid fire still gives quite a burst of attack speed, it's just while you don't have rapid fire up, um, you don't quite get as much attack speed as you did before, and Rapid Fire does not last quite as long as it used to, so she can't quite spam the hugely impressive attack speed buff all the time. But she still gets it in time to be able to make use of all three shots that the Nami will be giving her with Tide Caller's Blessing, so there's still some good synergy in that lane, and it's still a very, very solid lane. As far as some of the other ones go, it's going to be a middle lane Orianna versus Ari, a very defensive and wave clear focused pick from the side of Gamers 2, whereas Origin is going with a more assassination heavy comp, especially with the Nidalee in the top lane. That Nidalee, ever since her changes a while ago now, has been more and more a sort of huntress, which I suppose is a bit more true to the form of her lore, rather than the kind of poke heavy monstrosity that she used to be. The Q turn around from Amazing. He's going to be going in onto Animator here. Animator is going very, very low. The Ignite is burning, but he gets the shield from Orianna, and he flashes away. He just about survives. Now, Xpeke is in a 1v1 duel with Perks here. Perks is getting very, very low, though. The charm lands. Amazing comes back in again, but the first blood goes over to Orianna. Now, Touch My Tagata has teleported out of the top lane, and this fight has been going on so long that bottom lane has had time to roam up to the mid to participate a little bit, and they chase away the Nidalee. First Blood going over to Gamers 2. Animator nearly died there on Jarvan, but a clutch Orianna shield saved his life at the last moment from those last few ticks of Ignite that would have spelled his doom. And uh, that's going to be the early advantage going over to Gamers 2. As uh, Orianna clears out the last few minions before probably heading on back to base. Kinda low here. And Amazing is back from base himself. If Oriana chose to stick around in that lane, she could find a bit of a nasty surprise in the form of Amazing Lee Sin coming in and giving him a bit of a, uh, I don't know, belated gank. So he is going to be heading on back home to base. Picked up the first blood as well, so going to rush right into the chalice. Now most, most mid laners currently do not actually like going the chalice route. They prefer to go the Morellanomicon route, but chalice is really 
it, it, it got nerfed. It's been nerfed in succession two or three times now. Each a very small nerf, but over time it did add up. But we have a little bit of a fight in the bottom line. I'll get back to that in just a second. Yuki got bubbled up, now he's forced to Valkyrie away. The trade went fairly in favor of Origin. But Gamers 2 did manage to chunk away a bit of Zanillion's health bar, but Nami still has a good chunk of mana left and has a lot of healing as well in Ebb and Flow, whereas Janna simply doesn't have that option. The damage mitigation is certainly there, but up in top lane, Touch My Tagada is getting chased away. Nidalee, very, very slippery to catch up to, might be able to escape here. The Q does not land from JWoww, so he decides to turn around and try and flank in onto the Nidalee, going under the tower perhaps. Yeah, taking a few tower shots. There's the knockup from Animator, and Touch My Tagada is going down for the second kill of the game to Gamers 2. And as I was saying in the bottom lane, Mithy still has some of his mana bar left, and Nami certainly has the advantage in terms of sustain in this lane, because while Janna does have damage mitigation, that's not very useful after the damage has already happened. So, if they trade evenly in a duel, it's really going to be very much in favor of Mithy and Zvanillion, simply because Mithy has the ability to heal up after a trade. However, I would say within a duel, Kasing and Yuki probably have the advantage, because Yuki on Corky just has more instantaneous burst than a Tristana can output, and Kasing has... I would say at least equivalent burst and protective capabilities to a Nami in a 2v2, though Nami is certainly not one to be underestimated. Always been a popular support pretty much ever since one patch after her release. On release, Nami was a little bit underpowered, but a, a little bit after her release, she's been popular ever since then because she just has a good amount of stuff in her kit. She has everything that a support needs. Utility, slows, speed buffs on everything. There's the bubble ending on Yuki, though. Some good damage traded back, and Kasing has no mana, so really can't afford to make these sorts of trades. Yuki is going dangerously low. We might be able to see Amazing come down for a gank at some time, though currently he's spending a bit of time near the mid lane in the enemy jungle, actually, clearing out a ping quarter. You saw the ping on the map right there. As uh, some trades go on between Orianna and Ari in the mid lane. Top lane is really the only place that we haven't focused at all ever, and we did just see a gank up there, giving another kill over to the side of Gamers 2, but there's the Orb of Deception! Gonna be bringing down perks, actually amazing. Finishes off the kill, and Jarvan is there just kind of to bear witness to Orianna's death. Not in time to make any difference in the engagement. Oh, and Kasing popping Monsoon just for the heal. They really want to stay in lane, they don't want to head back home. They don't want to miss out on any of this CS, so Kasing's going to spend the mana and, well, the big cooldown just to get the heal, the sustain for the lane. So I suppose Janna does have some lane sustain if she chooses to pop her ult for that effect. Not quite as um, reliable lane sustain as Nami's ebb and flow, but it does exist, so I guess Kasing goes right there and proves me wrong in terms of this matchup. As uh, we swap back up to the top lane, where Touch My Tagata has been pushed under the tower is actually losing out on CS, which is something I didn't really expect to see. Nidalee's become a fairly decent lane bully ever since her changes, and while Lissandra can very well hold her own against most lanes, she... I wouldn't say that I'd put her on quite the same par as a Nidalee in terms of presence in a lane, though to be fair, she's much, much better at following up on ganks, and we've seen a gank up in the top lane. We've already seen that. They dove under the tower. Ooh, there's the ult from Zvanillion, though, knocking Yuki away, doing a burst of damage as well, but really that's all. No follow-up after that, so Yuki's just going to continue to farm, and eventually, perhaps, Kasing will have Monsoon back up again to use it for the lane sustain, which would be a little bit odd, but if it, it's worked out for them as a tool. It's meant that uh, Yuki has managed to stay within five or six farm, of Zvanillion here, when really he should have been falling behind, given all the trades that have been going on in favor of Origin. Mithy's trying to make some aggressive play happen here. Zones them away, because they really don't want that fight. Probably the most intelligent decision by them, especially considering that Amazon's off around behind, sitting in the bush near the tower there. They might choose to go for a dive. They have to know that this is coming, though, because suddenly Mithy and Zvanillion start pushing like mad. They want to get the minions under the tower so that Amazing can come in without taking a few tower shots. Knocks him against the wall! Beautiful Dragon's Rage! Kasing now is the focus of their ire. He's got ignited. He's going to be going down to the dot damage from Zanillion. Meanwhile, two teleports like beacons into the sky are both coming in near the tower. JWoww finishes off the kill onto Mithy and then ults himself to survive a little bit longer, but it doesn't really matter. He's forced to flash over the wall anyway. 
Overall, a 3 for 1 trade in favor heavily of Team Origin. Well played, Tower Dive, drawing resources from everywhere. Mid lane was the only place on the map that didn't participate. They pulled in both junglers, they pulled in both top laners, which is actually quite good for both of the top laners because it means that neither one of them has to deal with the other one having the teleport advantage because they both chose to teleport into that fight. That means that teleport is down for both of them and pretty much at exactly the same time too. Incredibly good map awareness from both top laners in this, though you have to assume that the teams are in some sort of voice comm talking to one another, so they probably called it out as well, but still good team coordination from both sides and that is why I was so excited to cast this game for you and why I'm still excited. Wonderful tower dive. Let's get back into what's going on currently, though. Stop raving about what just happened. <laughs> Dragon still yet to be contested by either team. If either side had gotten a true advantage there without having to give up so many hit points, because, well, Origin did get the advantage there, but Amazing went incredibly low. Everybody was really low. One of them died, so they didn't really have enough pressure on the map to go and take the Dragon, so it's still up. It still has yet to be taken out. Um, and so grabbing that's actually going to be a really big deal. The first dragon of the game makes the next dragon of the game easier to get because it just gives you a flat buff to a lot of things. I mean, sure, it buffs your damage because it gives you AP and AD, but AP also scales with healing spells. It scales with movement speed buffs sometimes. For Janna, it's going to scale with the heal on monsoons. So it's more than just a damage buff. It's in, It has a lot of different somewhat intangible benefits. The first dragon buff is probably the most important global objective in the first 25 minutes of the game, I would have to say. Unless you're pushing so hard that you're getting to an inhibitor turret at that point, which uh, at that point, probably getting the dragon anyways. Peke firing off a charm, lands onto a minion though, probably not the target he really wanted to hit. And it looks like Team Origin is grouping up somewhat in the mid lane here. While Zvanillion manages to hold his own on bottom lane against Yuki perfectly fine, which isn't really what I expected. I expected the Corky to have a much more early presence in this game, which is kind of a bad sign for gamers too, because they don't have the late game AD carry in this matchup, and Zvanillion just 1v1 Corky. Why didn't... Directed camera. I curse you sometimes, but whatever. We don't need to know what happened. We just need to know that it did happen, and that the ramifications of that are going to be far, far reaching. Um, that gives, that gives the already ahead Tristana 2-0, and well 1-0 before that, another kill, putting her at 2-0, and and taking the AD carry off the board, like that is a huge kill right there. It was only one kill in a 1v1 situation, it didn't seem too incredibly flashy. But Tristana isn't supposed to be ahead early, so getting ahead early on Tristana means she will be ahead late, pretty much guaranteed, which is when you want her to be ahead. It got them the dragon because that was down, which means it puts Tristana even further ahead. And it helps out Nidalee, who's up in the top lane and has been having a lot of trouble against Lissandra. Pretty much the one problem spot for the side of Origin. So it's it's really sort of a panacea for all of their problems. But there is JWoww going in under the tower. They really need to make something happen here. And they are trying to do it. They understand that they have to do something to be able to pull back control of this game, and there is Xpeke going right in, the Ignite is dropped into Jay while he flashes forward for the auto attack, there's the Monsoon pop by Kasing, he has it back up, and this time he's not just using it for sustained shutdown, actually going over to him off of the Lee Sin, 2 for 2 trade, 2 for 4 trade, as Vanillion is on a killing spree, and Yuki has been split pushing bot lane this whole time. <laughs> Well played by the side of gamers too, realizing that the game was starting to slip from their control, they took control of it back. They grabbed that steering wheel and they drove the car right into mid lane, right behind the turret, and dove in onto three or four people and actually played the dive pretty damn well if I have to say myself, but Zvanillion has roamed from the bottom lane, the damage is not quite there before Janna flashes away, and then he simply buster shots the Orianna back to make sure that he doesn't get uh, any ill-fated results of his attempted 2v1. <laughs> it, was, it was a brave move, but, I mean, he traded his ult for a flash, so I would say that uh, Zvanillion certainly got the better of that trade. Meanwhile, Amazing is going to clear out his red buff. We have a little, little bit of a quieter moment on the map now, that uh, we've had so many big crashing moments of action that have tried to determine the fate of this game, but it's still incredibly, incredibly even. 
neither side really getting a decisive lead yet. I mean, you could say that Origin did have a decisive lead. They had their Tristana, they still have their Tristana at 3-0. That is going to be a problem, but now there's an answer on the other side. There's a 3 and one Lissandra who can press R on that Tristana if she manages to gap close to that point. So basically what they have to do is land the Glacial Tomb onto Zvanillion. They have to do that in one of these team fights. If they do that, they probably win the team fight because it's really easy for um, Oriana to follow up after that with a Shock Boy, Shock Blast. Sorry, no, Shock Wave, Shock Wave, Shock Blast is the Jace ability. Yeah, talking too quickly sometimes you mess things up. I do know ability champion names, champion ability names. See what I mean? But down on the bottom side of the map, Zvanillion is going to be knocked up by the tornado there, but. Honestly, they don't want this fight. The turret is incredibly low. They might be able to burst it down. Zemillion goes incredibly, incredibly low himself, forced to pop the heel as the tidal wave comes out to keep Kasing and Yuki away. But as I said before, it's still relevant now. Mithy has the healing advantage right here. So Zemillion is going to be able to easily sustain back up. Meanwhile, up in top lane, JWoww actually ults himself. I'm going to go ahead and assume that that was a misclick, probably meant to click on touch my tag at his Nidalee but accidentally ulted himself, however, the roam from Oriana manages to finish off the kill in the end. Either that or it was just to be BM and say, look, I don't need to ult you, I'll just ult myself, because I want to be a pretty ice statue, and you'll die anyways to my teammates. I doubt that was it, though. These, these players seem to be taking this match pretty damn seriously, which is what you'd kind of have to do when you're playing at this caliber of play. Every player in this game is one of the best players, arguably, on the EU West server. And so there are ten very, very heavyweight players here, ten powerhouses of the game. And it is an interesting and wonderful to watch game so far. Still neither side really having a solid lead. The gold is actually pretty much exactly even. The kills are just one away from each other and the turrets are exactly even. So that dragon, right now, is actually probably making a huge difference because it's the only real advantage in favor of one side or the other sitting over on the side of Origin. As we see, amazing, heading back to base. Exciting stuff, folks. Ooh, the charm lands on the perks, going in under the tower! There's the Deathfire grasp, the ignite is ticking, but the monsoon from Kasing is going to be saving the life of her friendly robot and ball friend. Still, though, um, for one ult got, I believe, the... No, actually. I thought that Oriana was running barrier, but it turns out Oriana's running Ignite, so didn't get the barrier of Oriana, seeing as that wouldn't happen. Zvanillion flashing forward, and the... who the explosive shot dot going to be finishing off Oriana. Rampage for Zvanillion. That is wonderful for the side of Origin. Having a powerfully fed Tristana at only 18 minutes into the game means at 25 minutes or 35 minutes into the game they are going to have a monstrous and scary Tristana. Here comes the Cataclysm locking up Zvanillion. Actually, he doesn't have his rocket jump back up. He finally gets it up in time to try and escape here. He did get exhausted, but that doesn't really matter when you're slowed. Even even when slowed, you can still jump away. JWoww flashing forward to land the ulti onto Lee Sin, but everybody has flesh. And Gamers 2 can't catch up to them, and a beautiful spear we weaves its way through the enemy team. Touch my tag at a finishing off Jarvan, and now chasing after Kasing and JWoww. JWoww does use Glacial Path to get away as the spear is dodged to the side. And so Touch my tag and not going to be able to get any follow-up kills after that, but that was a glorious spear threaded right through the enemy team to hit the single low health member that it would kill. That is the power of AP Nidalee. Still a viable build kit. Still a viable build, folks. Don't have to go Bruiser AD, which has been the flavor of the last few months, I suppose. I, I guess you could just call it her new build path, her new standard build path. Not really a flavor of the month thing anymore. Kasing getting Deathfire Grass, the Orb Deception hits as well. But they don't really want to continue to follow up on that one since Ari's kind of all alone on that side of the wall. And here comes JWoww. He doesn't have ult, though, so not really going to be able to do much. Just kind of is a scary looking dude going into the middle of them. Amazing! Finishes off the kill with a sneaky sonic wave over the wall. And Ari just kind of came in there with a lot of damage and Jarvan didn't survive anymore. That was a very cut and dried kill. Flash forward, land the charm, press all the other buttons, and win the fight. It doesn't have to be flashy, it can just work. 
that's fine. You don't you don't have to make epic plays every time you make any kinds of plays. You can just make average plays sometimes, and that might be good enough. Singing Yuki roaming through the jungle, and it looks like we're back to another quiet moments, folks. So you guys know what that means. We're going to go ahead and look at some of the item builds that have been forming. It's been plenty of time at this point to see where people have been going with their builds. As I said, that is an AP Nidalee, and going with a fairly odd AP Nidalee build, actually. Very... Um, very magic penetration focused rather than raw AP, which is certainly not the way you would have seen a traditional AP Nidalee be built back when it was the standard. So perhaps, perhaps up in the top side, um, Touch My Tagata knows something that I don't. That's probably true. Probably true that one of the best players in EU West knows something about this game that I don't. Um, I'd say it's a pretty fair bet. In terms of some of the other builds, we have a Static Shiv, first item on Zvanillion, who has now built into an Infinity Edge, so he's going to start hurting a lot right now. I mean, he was doing fine before, but this is a power spike extraordinaire for this guy. Flash Forced from John, and up on the top lane, amazing, and Touch My Tagada are going to make short work of JWoww. Didn't even have time to alt R himself and become invulnerable. The burst from those two is obscene. Speaking of, that is a warrior enchantment on Amazing, so he has some damage on Lee Sin, but it looks like past that, he's not going to be building anymore. Now, Kasing has eaten a few auto attacks from Tristan and goes down fairly low as Animator. What are you doing, Animator? You don't have a team to follow up. He's forced to flash out of there, and Amazing is going to keep on with the chase. Nice sidestep. Just avoiding the Q. He was even hit by the Chilling Smite right beforehand, so he sidestepped that while slowed. Well done. I mean, his mechanical skills are obviously on point, but... I'm still a little bit confused as to why he decided to try and go for that flank. Meanwhile, Speke is pushing the bottom lane solo. He doesn't really need any backup right now. Anybody who tries to come to 1v1 him will get basically deleted. He's 2-1-3 on that Ari, which is a respectable KDA, but he has a Deathfire Grasp, and that's the more important thing to note. Ooh, however, JWoww might be able to handle it. He does bring him down, mainly because he was under the tower when he tried to fight him. But enough backup shows up from the side of Origin to at least take revenge on their fallen comrade. An animator, good god! That Jarvan is quite squishy. He has no armor items yet, and Zanillion, as I've mentioned a few times now, is doing very, very well on Tristana. So, this Tristana is going to be able to absolutely melt Jarvan. As you can see right here, he's going down very, very slow. He's dominating now, and Mithy just about survives with his life. Now, the exhaust has been dropped onto Zanillion, and actually a bunch of damage comes out from Perks, but he flashes away, and there's Touch My Tag and a trapped under the tower. He has nowhere to go. He tosses a spear onto Yuki. He wants to at least take somebody down with him, but he doesn't quite finish the leap before a shrapnel auto attack from Yuki brings him down. Ooh, flash forward for the crit. <laughs> Zanillion is godlike. I don't know that he really needed the crit, but it was it was to secure the kill. Just to make sure. I mean, Oriana was quite, quite low, I think, even if he hadn't gotten the lucky crit right there. And I think the static shiv procced as well, so Oriana had just no way to get out of that one. Aside from not being there in the first place, but that option had already been exhausted by the time the flash happened. JWoww pushing out the mid lane, then roaming somewhere else. The, there are two pink wards right next to each other. Both of these teams know that there is a pink ward next to their pink ward, but they have some sort of truce over there on that uh, minimap near the Baron Pit. I'm not quite sure why another side has chosen to kill the enemy pink ward, but maybe they know something I don't. As I said, these are some of the better players in, well, the world, so I would be surprised if they didn't. Finally, Xpeke is going to go after that pink ward, and justice has been served. Baron might be an objective that these teams are considering here. They are at least considering the vision war around it, and it looks like Origin is certainly winning that war. Now JWoww is getting chased by Touch My Tagada up in the top lane. The heals are pretty insane from an AP Nidalee. I had almost forgotten. I wish I could forget. It's just painful memories, my friends. As Mithy continues to do his best to gain complete control of the vision around this dragon. I mean, Baron, Pit, wrong side of the map, Kasing is trying to get some control back, but Peke is not going to have a, any bit of that. He dashes forward. The DFG was used, but Kasing didn't quite die. His own shields plus the shields from the Orana, there are a lot of shields on the side of gamers too, kept him alive. And they are actually quite good at finding off this Ari. Um, they've managed to avoid getting assassinated in, I would say, like 
four out of five attempts, but they haven't really been able to catch her and kill her, so she still has a decent KDA simply by virtue of not having died very much, which is quite a nice skill to have, by the way. One of the better things you can do in this game is simply not die, even if you don't make flashy plays everywhere. Not dying is, is a very nice thing. Oh, touch my Tagada under the tower, though, and he gets stunned up as well. That was a misstep. JWoww finishes off that kill. Easy as pie. Now, Animator is in a bit of trouble. He gets kicked away, but through Kasing's Monsoon. The half a second he spent in the edge of the Monsoon actually saved him as Shockwave completely whiffs. And that that's in favor of the side of gamers, too. We haven't seen a fight that went really hard in favor of them yet, and I can't actually say that went really hard in favor of them. They got one kill. But they blew the Orianna ulti, and they traded Monsoon for it, essentially, as well as Lissandra's ult. Lissandra used her ulti in the sort of semi-1v1 off to the top side to get the one kill that they got. But because they had no presence on the other side of the map, it, Origin's gonna take the second dragon anyways. Even though they kinda lost that teamfight, it doesn't matter. Gamers 2 had no presence over there on the bottom of the map. They don't have a single ward on that side of the map. So they lost the dragon, and the second buff might not be quite as important as the first, but you know, you gotta get number two before you can get number three and five, and... I missed one of the numbers in there somewhere, but I'm sure someone will tell me which one, and... It, it basically, counting, if you don't get number two, you can't get up to number five, which is the one you really want, because that's the one that makes your entire team into veritable gods among men, and unstoppable forces of pushing and fighting all in one. Whereas number two just makes you very good at pushing. And actually does help the jungler out quite a bit, because it doesn't only apply to lane minion monsters, it applies to um, monsters in the jungle as well. So it makes clearing the jungle that much easier for your jungler, which means that they can get back to fighting with the team more often after going through and clearing around in their jungle. So that's a nice little perk. It's, it's the little things about these buffs and about these various small map maneuvers that can really make the difference in a game of this caliber. So it's, it's a good thing to keep track of all of the different buffs that people have and make sure that um, there's a good understanding of everything that's happening across the board. Zvanillin is pushing out the top lane, getting a bit more CS under his belt. He's done very well so far and he's only going to keep getting more and more gold, so... This game is going to be a rough one for Gamers 2 to win. I'm going to go ahead and call it right now. Though they do have a decent team for coming back, especially in team fights. They've got a lot of AoE potential and ways to get the Orianna Ball into a perfect position. They could have Lissandra go into the Glacial Path with the Orianna Ball on her head, on her head or of course the more standard and well, pretty much bread and butter combo of Animator on Jarvan going in with a ball and Cataclysming in right onto the back lines and then getting a Shockwave followed up right after that. That can always be devastating, but they have to have some way of dealing with Xpeke's push. If you look at the minimap down there, Ari is split pushing the bottom lane and now roaming up to mid while Lissandra's busy dealing with the, min with the minions. This rotation could actually lead to a team fight in heavy favor of Origin if they get caught out here. Yuki is in a lot of trouble. He gets charmed back. The Orb of Deception brings him down. That is exactly what I was talking about. Wonderful play by Xpeke here. Beautiful map movements. Animator gets away by the skin of his teeth, and Kasing and Perks are both running through the jungle. And it looks like this might be the Baron attempt from the side of Origin. Just everything flows one into another with the teams of this caliber. That's why it's so wonderful to watch these kinds of games, and it's a joy to shoutcast them as well, because if you pay close attention to what's happening across the board, you can see decisions take shape and take form, and Perks brings down Xpeke who has a wonderful alt name, by the way, Xpooks, I love it. Um, a little bit caught out by Ari there, thought he could handle the 1v1, but it turned into a 2v1, and Animator brings down Nami! Nami, though, brings down Animator as revenge! And this is disastrous for the side of gamers, too. Zvanillin is legendary off of the kill onto Orianna, has not died once on Tristana, not once! Not, not twice, either, not any amount of number times. This this Tristana is 8-0-6. This is the backbone of Origin right now. They do have to back off the dragon, the Baron. I, large lizard-like things, I get them confused. They do have to back off of the Baron. And so at least Gamers 2 held them from getting that. But to be honest, they traded a bunch of kills for it. And they gave up a lot more pressure for it. 
touch my tag at a final, he gets the outer dirt and top lane. That's kind of just a foregone conclusion at this point. It was just a matter of when it was going to happen. But that is a bit more gold in the pockets of Team Origin, who already have a lead. They're 5-3 and three in turrets now. They have a 7,000 gold lead? Yes, yeah, 7,000 gold lead or so. And they're trying to turn it into plays at this point. That's, uh... That's the way you win a game, folks. You translate gold into plays at a ratio of about a thousand to one. No, I, I have no idea what the ratio is. That was that was entirely talking out my backside as um, Kasing tosses out a tornado, doesn't quite land it onto anybody, and Mithy and Xpeke are getting some good control of the jungle here. It looks like they might go for another Baron attempt if they don't manage to get a good pick or teamfight engage. They have a very good team for picking people off. They have Ari to land the charm, and they of course have the Dragon's Rage back into the team, the classic Insect to try and get a pick like that, and then they have an incredibly safe backline in the form of Tristana and Nami, which means that the front line is free to go and jump onto people. They don't need to stick around and defend. The Dragon's Rage can be used aggressively. It doesn't have to be used as a defensive tool to keep the Tristana safe, because Tristana, of course, along with Nami, has six or seven different ways of keeping herself safe and doesn't really need the help of a Lee Sin. It's one of the benefits of running a Tristana AD carry. You can have a very, very aggressive team. Amazing looking to land the Q. Does land it on the casing. Doesn't want to go any further though with that engage as Nami gets chunked down actually from an auto attack from Yuki. But there goes x back into the back line. Yuki's going very, very low. The Chilling Smite and the Dragon's Rage both land. But finally, the Q brings him down and this fight is snowballing over to the side of Origin. Three to zero, two of them going to Amazing. Double kill for him, well done on engaging that fight. They looked for it for what seemed like forever, but they finally managed to pick it up, and they aren't even bothering with minions. They're just gonna go ahead and face tank the laser, bring down the middle inhibitor, and uh, get the first inhibitor of the game down 32 minutes in. This is a much longer game than I expected it to be. Usually at this level of play, a game is done somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes. And the rest is just kind of a foregone conclusion, but this one has been a well-fought game from both sides, and it looks like Origin starting to take a very decisive lead. That is the third dragon buff going over to the side of Origin. They're going to head on back to base. They're going to regroup. They're going to buy some items, and they're going to come back even stronger than before, having stolen away the red buff as well as the dragon, because, hey... The small advantages are still advantages. Even at this point in the game, when your Tristana is 809, when you have an Ari that can insta-delete someone, there's no reason to give the enemy team a red buff. That extra little slow might make the difference between a kill or a terrible engage next time, so you don't want to give them any chance to come back into the game that you can avoid giving them. That's It's a sort of chokehold that more experienced players can put onto a game and it's one of the reasons why, as I said, these games often end between 20 and 25 minutes. But there is Xpeke going right in the exhaust, is not going to save this Janna's life. Xpooks brings that one down. Now Amazing turns around with the Dragon's Rage, lands it onto two of them, knocking one of them up in the process. An animator is caught deep in no man's land. Double kill for Nidalee. Had a rough laning phase, but has certainly come back into her own right here. As looks like Team Origin's gonna take a, dra take a Baron. Yeah, there's no way that Gamers 2 is going to be able to steal this unless there's some sort of miracle. Oh, Oriana drops into the charm right there as Vanillin just finishes off the Baron. Just with a little one-two punch right there. And that is the surrender coming from the side of Gamers 2. Thank you guys for watching. Well played by both teams. It has been a joy to cast. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. I'll be seeing you next time. My name is Octavian. Hey guys, thank you for watching, and a special thank you out to Epic Skillshot. He allowed me to share this particular shoutcast over on his channel, so if you're watching it there, I hope you enjoyed, and if you like more content like this, you can find me over on my own YouTube channel called Jacks of All Trades. Seriously, thank you very much, Epic Skillshot. I will be seeing you all later, at least I hope. Have a good new year.